Well, that's a very important point. Uh, when the crisis started, everyone understood that some new economic policies need to be introduced. A new concept came in, QE, QE0, QE1, QE2, QE3. You sound QE3. like Norma Rabini. <laughs> and before too long, there was the question of, are we in a detour or are we in a new paradigm? The longer the detour took place, the longer the perception that a new paradigm is coming with us. Well, I strongly believe that uh, if you have a new paradigm, that's fine as long as you are building it on the shoulders of the old one. What does it mean? Many of the basic truisms of the old textbooks are right. still extremely critical, very important. Don't throw them okay. away. They will be very useful. Krugman of Princeton long. is led on this saying, go back to Hicks in 1939 in the foundation of the banking system on the real economy. Has the modern theories in QE thrown the real economy out with the bathwater? Well, I hope not, because we are now worried about how do we get out of it. And I'm flabbergasted to hear that some people say, let's do another QE. QE4, QE5. Or in Europe. The situation is that every successive QE had diminishing returns. The beginnings were excellent and very effective, But very many successful. would say, so what? So diminishing returns, but at least it's better for a slice of the population in Europe. Uh, not, uh, not really, because at the end of the day, you have to exit. And when you exit, the deeper you dig, the longer and the more you need to exit. The problem is that debt is accumulation. Still in Europe, there is a lot of debt. Leverage has not yet been even removed. If you looked at the leverage ratios in Europe, there is still a long way to go. Did you ever have to prepare the nation of Israel for a rate increase? Did you ever have to do that on your watch? Well, unfortunately, when I started, inflation was extremely high. So you're bringing it down. And I, One of your great I triumphs. had to bring inflation down. Okay. And the only way I could bring it down was by, was by raising you, rates. Would you explain to my mail, my tweets, my handwritten letters, what is holding the Fed back from a modest lift off the zero bound just to get back to some form of normality? What would be the worst outcome of that? Well, if the economy is not prepared for it, and if somehow it will be interpreted as uh, increasing fragility, then it will not be healthy. But I believe that, especially if you read Stanley Fisher's speech in Jackson Hole, you see that from all dimensions, we are getting ready there. The growth of GDP is recovering. Even inflation starts raising its head. Even unemployment is falling and labor markets then are clear. Then why are and we the debating this issue? This is not in the textbooks you or I read. Why are we even having a debate? Well, I think that the, the Fed is looking at the picture, and I will not be surprised if, if it's September, maximum a little later, raise, rates will be raised. And let's, let's emphasize what is the important point. We are not talking about one step. We are talking about a start of a journey. So when rates are raised, it should be understood. It is the beginning of a journey of raising rates, not in a dramatic way, in a very measured way, slow way, but consistent way. And now that rates are so close to zero, if the journey starts, the idea is to finish it within another year or two or even three and come back to more normalization. For, for the Fed, normalization does not mean did, one action, but a journey did that you will say bring September? you. Did, did, did you say September, Dr. Pringle? Did I say September? I said September. I said December. I said many months. But your preference is for You're September. You're such a central banker. No, I think Do you that want to say May? No, I want to, see, <laughs> I want to see what will happen on Friday. It will give me some information about the state of the labor market. Fair, fair. Which the, fair. And the Fed was very explicit. Yes. In, in the last statement, it says we need to see further improvement <clears throat> in the labor but market, and it has improved. Do you suggest that as that vector happens and we become measured in our rate increase, yes. that we're going to a new lower terminal rate, as your Michael Faroli has, has led his research on? Well, I believe we will have uh, successively growing rates, and frankly, if it is spinned properly and explained properly, it should be viewed as good news in the U.S. and in the world because the Fed has proven itself that it is very prudent and that it will not raise rates unless they believe the economy is robust. And if the Fed announces, to our judgment, the economy is robust, my God, it should be viewed as good news. Okay.